Uh, good evening. I'm going to go ahead and call this meeting to order. Today is April the 10th. It is the regular meeting of the Ethics Commission for the City of Laredo. Let me go ahead and start with roll call. Uh, I'm Sigifredo Perez, the chair, uh, present. Mr. Saba Zapata. Present. Ms. Adriana Alexander. Mr. Mark Pease. Present. Mr. Hector Lee Patino. Mr. Frank Castillo. Present. Mr. Vidal Cantu. Present. Mr. Henry Herford. Present. And Ms. Elsa Galvan. Present. Okay, we have a quorum. Okay, next item on the agenda is the citizen communications. Did we have anybody sign up? There's one. Your name, sir? Good afternoon. Uh, could I ask a point of um, procedure maybe before I uh, give my comments? If uh, Could I ask that, sir, of you? I think there's one. Okay, your name, sir? David Cardwell, for the record. Okay, Mr. Cardwell, proceed. Yes, I'd like to ask, a before I start with my presentation, I'd like to ask a point of order or a point of procedure. Um, at the city council level, and I brought this to you before, at the city council level, the mayor and the council allows us to speak in public comments if we want to, or if we're talking about an agenda item, they will allow us to wait and talk when that agenda item comes up. So um, my comments are on an agenda item for this evening. Um, do I give my comments now, or do I wait until the agenda item comes up? I think it'd be best to do it now, Mr. Cardinal. All right. At least I just, that's what I understand, Ms. Paul. We don't have an allotment for general comments on a specific agenda, right. item, correct? Right. But they do a city council. I, that's what Luckily, I we're there. not the city council. I, I know that, but I just wanted the, <laughs> the city <laughs> legal to respond because they're at every city council meeting. Right. Thank you. All right. Honorable Chairman and Commission members, for the record, my name is David Cardwell. Speaking from being the vice chair of the first <coughs> ethics commission, I applaud this commission for your forward thinking to review the code of ethics. The time is right for a thorough review. Seeking input from the citizens and then presenting your recommended changes to the city council for action. Please do not be concerned whether they will or will not accept your recommendations and the input from the citizens. Do the right thing present needed ethical changes in good faith for the benefit of our citizens. It has been said that ethics is moral principles. It is a system that defines right and wrong and provides a guiding philosophy for every decision made. I would apply this statement to every decision our city council officials and employees make. Right now, I believe this commission should prepare and recommend an ethics code revision that will restore public trust that the city of Laredo will operate under the highest ethical standards. The final revised document that you present to the city council will serve as a key step in restoring public trust in our city government. As you consider changes to the ethics code within your commission and from the input from your town hall meetings with citizens, please ask yourself these questions. Number one, how can we strengthen the ethics code to inspire public trust in city government and require that city officials and employees be honest, accountable, impartial, and responsible to citizens? Number two, how can we strengthen the ethics code so that the public cannot be used so the public office cannot be used for personal gain and city government decisions and policy be made in a proper and transparent manner. Number three, how can we strengthen the ethics code so our city government will be a role model for top notch ethical behaviors for other communities to follow? And number four, how can we transition to an ethics commission that will be a quasi judicial board with a budget, staff, legal support, appointed members with term limitations, and totally independent from the city council and city administrations. There are ethics commissions in other cities that are like that. 
Bottom line, to be an effective ethics commission, your job is not to work for city council or city administration. It is to work for the citizens. I have been in your seat and I have confidence that you all have the skills and, exp and experience necessary along with the input from the public to formulate and present rock solid recommended changes to the ethics code that will make it clear that the primary function of the city government is to serve the best interests of the citizens, not special interest groups. I thank you for allowing me to come before you and I hope that you will follow that. Uh, would, could you have that in writing? Yes, I do. Could you submit it to the commission? Yes, you can. I'd appreciate it. Right here, I will. Thank you and uh, I look forward to uh, coming before you all again as you go forward, hoping you will have town hall meetings to uh, seek the public input. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Thank Perry. you. Thank you. Has any questions? Yes. Do we have any other persons who yes. signed up? To Lisa speak? Penny. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Dr. Liza Pena, and I'm here to share my opinion regarding revisions that need to be established to the Code of Ethics. Revised codes ethics should set standards about work activities, business relationships, and the use of city resources that apply to all city employees, elected officials, and members of city boards and commissions. The proper operation of any city government requires a strong code of ethics as a foundation implemented and enforced by the most qualified diverse group of citizens that serves on an ethics commission. We don't need a symbolic commission. We want a commission with the power to deter violations. Who do you want the ethics commission to report to? An ordinance was approved by the city council to strengthen, strengthen the ethics review commission in the city of Austin. Due to the citizen panel being tasked with investigating and judging ethics complaints made against city officials, the ordinance gave the commission a number of new powers, including to subpoena witness, witnesses and impose penalties for, the, for those who disobey them and to request Im, investigative assistance for the city auditor. It also allows the city auditor to hire an independent investigator to look into complaints filed against city council members, their staff, or city, the city manager and to refer their investigation to the Ethics Review Commission. The new Ethics Commission should provide external oversight of the city government and elected officials and enforce ethics laws. The new Ethics Code should include laws related to campaign finance contribution limits and public financing of campaigns. The Austin City Code has limitations on campaign contributions and expenditures. No candidate for mayor or city council and his or her campaign committee shall accept campaign contributions in excess of $300 per contributor per election from any person. No candidate and his or her committee shall accept a total contribution of more than 30,000 per election and 20,000 in the case of a runoff election. A small donor political committee shall not contribute more than $1,000 per candidate per election for the offices of mayor and city council. The new ethics code should include training local officials on ethics and ethics laws. In the city of Dallas, the commission also created two committees tasked with specific goals to aid the commission in becoming more effective. Committees, the committee for ethics awareness for public complaints and ethics training committee to establish an ethical city environment through a continuous ethics training sessions for the city officials and employees. In the Dallas Code of Ethics, the Ethics Advisory Commission has the following powers. To review and dispose of sworn complaints, to conduct investigations of violations within the jurisdiction of the Ethics Advisory Commission, the, ex the Ethics Com Advisory Commission shall have the power to issue subpoenas for the attendance of witnesses, production of documents and other evidence that the, city, that the Ethics Advisory Commission deems necessary for any evidentiary evident, hearings. This is a quote from, the, from George Harley. People that run 
course, public office need to understand that they are running for a position of trust, a position of public integrity. Power tends to corrupt, and absolute power corrupts absolutely. Lord John Acton. And um, that's all I end with this. Miss, I'll ask you the same thing. Do you have a copy of that? Yes. That you could submit to the commission? Sure. I have this, and I also have more uh, like, no, I pages. I just, want, like, I just want what you talked about. Sure. I can give this. I will talk Thank to you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, may, may I ask a question? Sure. Yeah, Mr. Cardwell and Doctor, what, what do you estimate the time frame to revise the code of ethics? To do it effectively and do it in a very open, public way and transparent, uh, I would probably say. 90 days and it would not have to go to the voters uh, you take it to the people in town hall meetings then you hold meetings where the people could attend as you go through it then you present it to the city council and the city council right there will accept what you present to them or reject it or modify it uh, if it had to go to the voters that would be a totally different thing i'm saying maximum three three months 90 days, and that's max. I'd like that's to see meeting it. how many times? Pardon? That's meeting how many times? Meetings? You've got eight districts in the town. If you want to be really effective, there's nine of you up here besides the chairman. He represents the mayor. Mm -hmm. I'd say you need a town hall meeting in each of the eight districts. That would be eight meetings. So if you had eight meetings, try to maybe do two meetings a week. I think that I think it's doable. And by doing this, you're telling the people, we are being transparent. We're seeking your input. The ultimate decision will be made by the city council. But you as a commission here, you can say, we're doing the right thing. How and many I would years has you the Court of Ethics been in, in place? How many years? Yes. Uh, I want to say no more than, and I served on the first two years of it. I'm thinking maybe, I'm guessing eight could be six years it's, it's been here, but you've really got to remember how it got here. It, if you would bear me, I'd like to answer that yes. for that, all right. The citizens wanted an ethics commission. The city did not have one. It went to the voters. The voters passed at the ballot box. They passed that we will have an ethics commission in the city, okay? City administration did not go forth with the wishes of the people until a lawyer walked right up here by the name of George Algeth. Oh. He threatened to sue the city if you don't create the ethics commission that was voted in. And the city did within 30 days set you guys up. And I was on the first one. We were on the first one. So you were responsible for the first set of code of ethics? No, there was a commission. A co there was a committee, a separate committee set up. And I believe you were on that original Correct. committee. There, and Tomas Isagiri and some others. Correct. There was a group of citizens that created the code, but it was the city never implemented it until a threat of a lawsuit. That's when they implemented it. Okay, the next question. In the code of ethics that was created, did it have flaws? Did it have flaws? Let's say it this way. I, I believe uh, the word you might have used was symbolic. Did you use that yes. word? Okay. I believe the code of ethics was set up, uh, maybe was forced and it was symbolic. It has some teeth, but it is not strong enough. Your role, in my opinion, is to be oversight of city council and city administration. Remember, oversight. So that, to me, elevates you to a quasi-judicial board, and there are quasi-judicial boards in this community, one of them being the appraisal review board. And by the way, they get paid. So I would even change my speech now and say, if you create a quasi-judicial board, you should be paid every time you come here and meet because you're doing a service for us citizens. <coughs> you're the oversight. You're going to be making major decisions to improve our community and bring public trust back. Yeah, Mr. Carter, will I... I'm, I'm imagining here a 
tremendous work that has to be done according to what you're saying. Okay. There's got to be sections of that code that are okay. I would agree. Acceptable. I would agree. So we're not looking yes, at you know, taking this code and and breaking it all up and coming back with a new one. We I would agree, sir. So yeah, I, I like the idea of meetings at, at each uh, council area and let them work from there and from input and uh, let me ask Levo who who will who will put this document together by the way. Well, there is an item on the agenda, and so um, we can talk about you know specifics of that. But I mean, ordinances or um, those are uh, it's council that uh, approves an ordinance. So anything that would be a change, a revision to this, would yeah. be by ordinance, and it would go to council. Can I ask can a I question? Ask a question? I have a couple of questions for both of you. I noticed that I'm looking at the web link. It is September fourth, twenty twelve. Does that make sense, more or less? Yes, that, the that's it. Thank you. Created. Uh, I guess uh, what I'm interested in is, are you really recommending or promoting a revision? <clears throat> because I have heard before in the committee about actually creating an independent uh, office of public integrity that would actually do the same of uh, monitoring, auditing, uh, tracking uh, ethics decisions. Uh, where would you stand on that? What, what do you think of those ideas that it become more independent than what my, we are able to do? My comment on that would be, number one, it, it's a step. It has to be this right here first. You have got to get into your position of an oversight. Then if step number two could be that officer you talked about, but if you're going to have that officer, that officer has to report to you, mm -hmm. not to the city council, not to city administration. But this right here has got to be done first. Yes. Okay, so I was doing my research, of course, for the ones that I saw a lot of was Austin and Dallas. Austin did mention that they took a year and a half to pass it through. But since Austin, we don't have to take that long because they already set the example. So it was Austin and Dallas that has a lot of good ideas of oversight and they're using like what, mm -hmm. what you all were saying, an auditor to go directly to you guys instead of reporting. Like if there's an mm -hmm. issue, they will, the auditor will go, I, I have like eight pages of it, but I have to shorten it up, to you, report to you guys instead of going to city council. And it was an independent, um, it was independent, and I, everything was in Dallas and Austin that I saw and they took a year and a half and I have all those notes, but I have to shorten it up for, the, for these purposes. But they already have it complete, and it wouldn't, like he said, it would not, all we would have to do is adopt the, or amend, amend the Austin and Dallas and put it in here, and they hired an auditor, but the auditor would, went directly to the uh, commission. Yes, it did the not ethics go, commission. It was, uh -huh. Yes, yes you all would have more power. Like, it, you all would oversee, you all could even even get an attorney. The city would have to provide an attorney for you guys if there's an investigation that's outside and that was, I think, Austin. No, let, let me, let me, let me, let me, no, no, let me correct that. In my research and looking at other cities, if you create the quasi-judicial board, you hire the attorney. Mm -hmm. The attorney works for you. Mm -hmm. And you pay that attorney by the hour when you call that attorney in. So you won't be looking to the city for any support other than them giving you a budget. And right. one ethics commission, I think, had a hundred thousand dollar budget for the attorney. Well, for for the whole thing, but services. For you yeah, services. services. Uh -huh. But I think this is a giant step that's needed in the city of Laredo. We're looking at everything that's going on. We're trying to find a city manager. We're talking about our lifeline of the bridges and everything else. We're looking at. We've had three city managers in the last how many years? We paid out $1.5 million in the parachutes. Right here. The buck ought to stop right here. Here's where it can be controlled at. This right here. Dave, I, compl I compliment y'all for even being here. Dave, I have a question. Um, yes. Looking at what you said, I'm trying to paraphrase it in my mind, the actual... Uh, ordinances that we have already. Most of them probably wouldn't change. Right. Okay? 
But what would change is how we're appointed yep. and who and who can oversee what we, in fact, come up with. Mm -hmm. In other words, if we say Mary Jane's got to go to jail or to the legal people to, to prosecute, then that's it. That's it. It's yes. not going to be daydreamed or no. second-guessed or whatever by a political body above us. No. So really we're looking at trying to get the city to believe in the idea that we are, even if we're appointed by the city council, once they're appointed, they ha cannot be appointed. They can't fire us. That type of thing. I don't know how we do it, but whatever form yeah. we do. And we then can oversee everybody. Is that what you're saying? Yes, it would be staggered terms. Uh, it would be term limitations. And the appraisal review board has, per state law, six year maximum they can serve three two-year terms, so and you would have staggered terms, and then X number of years, and you'd okay. move. Yeah. Okay. Well, it, there's a the systems same, that are out there that you can... We're still on the same guidelines. So, basically, you're saying we go to these town meetings, we get what the people want, but we explain to them at the same time that we're not really talking about the actual individual ordinances, except ones that we find out we have to change. Right. And what we're really looking at, an oversight to be transparent and to keep the politics out of it. That is yes. correct. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right. give you more power. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other speakers? No, sir. Okay, so I can proceed to the next item? Yes, sir. I approve, make a motion to approve the minutes. Is there a second? I second it, but I, I need to ask a question. Well, sir. I, I asked it before that, uh, Last time, uh, Ms. Paul, they had eight and six. Mm -hmm. How many times did they actually meet? Was it eight times or six? Because here it says six. I believe it was six. Isn't that correct? Mm -hmm. I mean, that, I believe it was six. I mean, we did double check the, the number. And so if it says six there, that is the correct number. It was number. six times? Okay. That answered my question. Any other questions or discussion? Call the motion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Against? Motion passes. <clears throat> the next item is uh, Roman numeral number five, letter A, discussion and possible action by the staff commission. report, it says here. Oh, I'm sorry. Staff report, uh, presentation by city attorney's office on complaint item DD. Ms. Paul, are you going to proceed with that? Um, yes. Um, is there anything? Uh, so we, we do have a, a matter uh, to uh, that was brought forward to our office. Um, it does involve an employee. Um, is that the same item as letter B? Yeah, it's item, uh, yes, it says presentation on the complaint, which is 5B. Okay, so how, how, we, how did you want us to handle this? Um, well, uh, you all, um, if you want to hear, it does involve an employee, so you all can hear that um, in executive session if you so move. Um, okay, and th this would be uh, pursuant to the Section open 211 of the exception? Um, yeah, oh, yeah. Personnel and, and the exception? Yes. It would be um, pursuant to Section um, 551.074, Texas Open Meetings Act. Okay, and that would be the exception so we can go that ahead into closed session, correct? Yes. Okay. Do I have a motion to go into closed session? Well, before we do that, why don't we go ahead and finish A? We've been discussing it for a while. Well, you're, are you going to... Um, if you want to take things out of order, that is up to the well, chair. That's not, that, the, right now, A is next, not B. Yes, however... Section 4B um, in, uh, is the present is a staff report, which oh, is okay. so. Um, but uh, the chair can. Well, if you wish to go ahead and take things. I would just like to get the the that particular one while we have it fresh in mind what we're talking about, put to bed. That's what as what we are going to do, okay. And I personally have a recommendation that we need to meet separately among ourselves to see what we think we need to do to organize. Uh, how we want to get the data from other places, how we want to do the open meetings thing. But the, issue, so the issue right now is whether or not we're going to take things out of order. Yeah. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So what is the what are the wishes of the commission? Do you all wish I, to I make a motion ahead. that we do uh, Roman numeral 5A. Okay. Any further comments? No, I'll second it. Okay, second. Mr. P seconds it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Let's go ahead and take Roman numeral 5A first. And, and what I'm saying is I think we need to, I think we shouldn't have to do it today because I think we need to meet 
you know, as it, it doesn't have to be an open meeting because we're not, we're just going to look at things uh, as how we want to organize and how we want to get the staff to get us information from other Let's places, and, et cetera. Let, you know. Yeah, I think this is go ahead and start with the item and then we can go ahead and discuss and give any instructions. Okay. Okay. So this item, I believe, was placed on the agenda by um, one of the commissioners. So, uh, yes, one of the issues I understand in speaking not just with Mr. Hooker but others is trying to get some ideas about how our ethics ordinance compares to some of the other ordinances around Texas. We had some speakers today, uh, Dr. Pena and Mr. Cartwell, that identified specific municipalities that have ordinances that have a bit more autonomy. It mm -hmm. seems. I think a starting point, if we can go forward that way in evaluating what we have, is comparison to other ordinances from other municipalities. And so just from what I've heard, I think it would be a good idea to secure copies of the ordinances from, say, the city of Austin, the city of Dallas, to start. San Antonio. San Antonio, perhaps even McAllen. Um, okay. Um, and I did hear those uh, cities mentioned. I do have a couple of, um, I guess, uh, comments to it. Just. Um, uh, uh, so you all have the information. Again, you know, I would reiterate that um, the, the ethics code was created by ordinance, so any changes would be by ordinance, which means anything is subject to approval by um, council. Um, also, that this uh, the city's code of ethics was, um, in fact, modeled, if you will, after a municipal uh, code of ethics. So um, that's what, uh, that's how, uh, I guess, it came to be. That was used. Um, there are some differences, but it is essentially the same as the model code for municipalities. Um, the city attorney's office has done uh, research um, uh, and considered uh, making changes um, uh, to the proposals. In fact, in 2017, or I think it was 2017, um, that uh, the council had asked that we consider making changes to the ethics ordinance and solicited proposals uh, from several law firms, and that was in uh, June of 2017. Um, but it was a consensus that no changes were needed, okay, and that was back in um, uh, June of 2017. Um, and regarding the training, um, there is uh, on the uh, upcoming agenda, which will be on Monday, the second reading for um, a revision to the ethics ordinance, um, and that's 2019-0062, uh, and that has to do with training. And so. Um, what's going to happen is that the revision um, that is uh, on the agenda to that ordinance is to require that all current city officials and employees shall complete ethics training at least once a year. Um, and so, um, and then the other revision is to make it clear that it's the ethics compliance officer um, that will oversee or provide that training. Now, it, it could be by, let's say, another, you know, uh, you know, we would contract possibly with another entity to, to provide that another, um, uh, I guess, you know, lawyer's office or something. But those are some of the changes that are up there. So I wanted to make it clear, you know, to all of you sort of what, um, you know, that. And then the other thing, I think it is important to look at the ethics ordinance and under um, section 8.03, it does set out what the powers are of the ethics commission. And so those are the powers that you all have. Um, and so regarding the changes, um, which is set out in section 10, it says um, that the commission shall have jurisdiction to investigate and make findings, um, oh no, I'm sorry, powers. The Ethics Commission has the power to, and number 10, to prepare an annual report and to recommend to city council needed or desirable changes in ordinances under its jurisdiction. And the way that has been interpreted is that those changes would come through in that annual report. So just so that we're, you know, um, kind of all on the same page regarding the, you know, the ordinance. And so those would be some of the comments that I would have. Not to say that we couldn't get, you know, copies. And you all on your own can also, I mean, those things are all public record, that you all could take a look at those and then come back and put something on the agenda, you know, to have considered or, you know, discuss something with the mayor if you so cho choose to do so. Uh, I hope that's helpful. Mr. Chairman, Ms. Ms. Paul, um, do we have to have authorization by city council to move forward on this project? Um, I, I don't know where that, that power um, would come from. I mean, I would think having it on, 
having council direct you all to do that because right now, I mean, just to get a copy of an ordinance, you don't you don't have to get council to direct no, you, it to you don't permission need to do authorization that. Authorization to investigate and compare existing ordinance with any others. And remember, we're going to present it to them at the end anyway. Yeah, so so that, what yeah. we're doing is independent of, yeah, of them. Yeah, but I mean, Ms. Paul, I, I would like if uh, somebody in the staff in the city attorney's office could secure copies of the ordinances from the city of Austin, the city of Dallas, San Antonio, and McAllen at a minimum and provide copies to uh, every member of the commission. Okay. And uh, is that something that you can take care of your office? Yeah, we, we can. So I just want to make clear Austin, Dallas, McAllen, and San Antonio. San Antonio. Okay. Uh, we members can of the commission, any other that. municipalities that you all can think of or want us? No, I no. think that's, I think that's enough. Okay. okay. But I, I do like if when they then when they arrive and then we get copies of it, that we set up a meeting among ourselves to after we've reviewed them individually and get together and talk. Uh, you, know, um, you know, maybe in this room back here we can just sit here and talk about ourselves and we'll see how to, how we how we're going to absorb this and what we're going to recommend and then. Also, are we going out to do the open uh, meetings in the different areas and so forth? Yeah, we'll, we'll make sure that whatever we're doing is yeah. consistent with the Open Meetings Act yeah. since yeah. we are an open. Thank you. What is the, uh, yeah. what is the format the for us to prepare recommendations? Are they in writing? Are they presented to the city council by uh, one of us? Or what is the mechanism that is oh. used for this? The way it, it reads now, it's in your annual report. You can you it's can set out what those report. recommendations would be. Right. Mm -hmm. there so it's in writing. It's presented to the city council in writing. And so if you're going to look into revising the ordinance, the city the ethics ordinance, I imagine we have to start there with ground zero mm -hmm. and work from there to say, I would like to see this change on this item or this letter, whatever number, and then take it from there. Right. Unless we don't plan to do that because that is a challenging uh, mm -hmm. work. Yeah, and, and each of you are appointed by a particular council member or the mayor um, in Mr. Bettis's case, and nothing would um, prevent you all from contacting the person, you know, the council member who appointed you and saying, this is what I wanna do. They can put something on the agenda um, under one of their items uh, to bring up for discussion there. You know, the council. only problem with that is they get five votes against it, we can't do diddly squat. So the, we want to go through this just as a general group or come up with our recommendations and then present them to this. One of us can present them in front of the, just get an agenda item and sign up for it and put it on the on one of the meetings. And we one of us come up and say, hey, we're the exit committee and this is the changes we would like to see happen. Okay, then they have to come out in the open uh, to say something or not say something. Just for purposes of the record, can I have a motion to instruct staff to secure copies of the ordinance? So moved. Hold on, the ethics no. ordinances from the cities of Austin, Dallas, San Antonio, and McAllen. Yes. So moved, Mr. Pease? Yes. I second, second it. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Against? Motion passes. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, yes, sir. are we going to be holding town hall meetings once we get all the information to where we can include the, the citizens' input so we can be transparent? Or I think if that those are the wishes of the, the commission, certainly, but we just have to make sure that what we're doing is consistent with the Open Meetings Act and we conform what we want to do with the city attorney's office with okay. their guidance. Because I know a lot of people say, well, they're going to change it. How are they going to change it? We don't know. It's like the city council changed one of the ordinances to where the city can accept gifts. To this date, I've never seen the entire reading of it. Yes. Has any of you all? I have not. No, so, have. you know, the, the pe people are saying, well, are they changing it for the better or changing it for the worse? We need to be out there so the people can see what we're doing. I understand. I think at the end of the day, once it's presented to council, they will have the ultimate say as to whether or not they adopt all or part of it. Okay. But I think the question was public, uh, open, uh, public meetings. Yeah. Uh, yes. yeah. 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 Henry, I think that's the thing yeah. we got to yeah. do. We need course. to figure that out. We need to figure out, are we going to go to each district? Yeah. Or are we all going to go together? Is it just individual well, you, members? You know, you, you're going to have to have a quorum for these. It has to be such an open meeting. It should be at least five people at all times there to hear their complaints, their concerns. Because there's suggestions, it's, right? Yeah, well, yeah. if it's only four, that's not a quorum. Yeah. We're, we're, you know, then 
that they really we can hear them, but we can't do anything legally with what they're saying. Like a town hall meeting, I don't know if you need uh, quorums. Well, well, these are things we got to look at. Yes. Yeah, well, we, we have to look at them. You know, yeah. that's something we need to look at in order. You know, but you, just to keep. You know, well, we need a transparent. Transparency for all. I'm just going to suggest something that as members we keep the end in mind. If we can see where we want to go, and let's let's try to get there. The sooner the better. That way we avoid going into the site of sure. things that we don't really want to revise. Sure. We'll just well, let go to the things that we need to or should be discussed. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let me ask Miss Paul. Will, will there be staff support for all these meetings? Somebody reporting, somebody taking notes. We would we would address that, you know, when we get to it. But if it's an open meeting, then of course it would have to it would be recorded, and, and we would have you know staff would be there. So. Um. Yeah. Any further comments, questions, or discussion? I've, I've got one more. Sure. If we do if, if we do go forward with town hall meetings, how long would the people have to speak? Just three minutes, or can you know that they give, give their speech or whatever? Will there be a time limit? On him speaking. I'm not sure what the procedures would be for a town hall meeting. I don't believe so. Although never, we would probably establish some guidelines mm -hmm. going forward. You know, can yeah, that, you know, that's another thing that we need to look at. You know, here, people who come to public comment, they can speak three minutes. But when the item comes up, they're not allowed to speak. You know, like the discussion. But we had the discussion during public comment, Correct. which was good. Yes. But we did, you know, that's something else we need to look at. Henry, I think the biggest thing is uh, these are kind of questions that are great, but we need to get together first. Yeah, yeah, uh, no, okay, but, before but, we yeah. and discuss those kind of things because we have some data we need to know. We got to know what these other yeah. things do, yeah. and then we got to decide on what what's legal in the open meeting or a town yeah. hall. Okay. Or, these are all things we got to come up with before we answer your question. Yeah, okay, okay. In the words of Mr. Castillo, I'm set up a mechanism. Yeah. Exactly right. This is to recommend. Yeah, I mean, that's what we do. That we can do, and I'm basing on an annual report, but well, I mean, we can make a recommendation any time as an individual. Yes. Exactly. Any further comments, questions? Okay. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion that we adjourn to uh, the inner sanctum. Certainly. Let me just call up the uh, item. Uh, we can proceed with uh, 5B, it. is that correct? Right, 5B. And, yes. Okay, and that would be discussion with possible action on a presentment of an ethics report pursuant to Section 2.11 of the City of Laredo's Code of Ethics and relating to conduct by a city employee. Okay, Mr. Pease, you have a motion? Yes, I move we go into executive session. I second it. Okay. Uh, I, just a point of order just so that we can, we have to say the section number of the... Um, uh, can you amend your motion to say pursuant to Section 5.5? Five five point zero five point one. Yeah. Five five point zero. Yeah. Oh yeah. Five five one point oh seven one. Five five one point zero seven four. Okay. The Texas Open Meeting Act. And the, the motion. Has Texas been, Open Meetings Act. There you go. And the motion has been seconded. Discussion. Yes. Uh, what happened to item four? Staff report. That, that is that is being called at this time. Also, Miss Paul. Yeah. It's um four is. It's a uh, supplement. Four. Yeah. Yes. Four B. So we're okay. discussing both. Correct. Any further discussion, questions, comments? All those in favor say aye. 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 Against? Motion carries. We're going to executive session. The time is 6.09. We can go ahead and call the meeting back into open session. The time is 6.31. We're back in executive session. No action was taken. Uh, let me go ahead and call up the item again. It's 5B, discussion with possible action on the presentment of an ethics report pursuant to Section 2.11 of the City of Laredo's Code of Ethics and related, relating to conduct by a city employee. Do I have a motion? I'd like to make a motion that we proceed with the discussion of this item because there is enough evidence to show that a violation did occur. That is to continue with a complaint. Yeah, that we should continue with a complaint. And have a hearing. Seconded. And, and conduct a hearing, Mr. Roper. Correct? Yeah, conduct a hearing for it. Okay. And seconded. Okay, Mr. P, second the motion as amended. As amended. All right. Discussion? Any questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Against? Aye. 
Okay, we have one against Mr. Castillo. Yep. And the remainder is in favor. Motion passes. Okay, next item is we've yep. already gone through executive session. Next item is adjournment. I move that we adjourn. I second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? <laughs> no. Okay.